Today in the watercolor classroom, we're going to paint this ocean scene and we're going to use wet on wet. And I'm going to put in some areas of each, like it's a little bit more manganese over here. And then that, that area is going to need some more darks as well. And then over here it's grayer, but still with some blue. And then the grayer comes down under here. There's this one or two gray clouds. like it could be raining. So now I'm finishing this up with some more direct painting. of these rocks. to just put some of it's they're hard to see so I'm just mostly going to make them up in the lighthouse until this completely dries. And we can't put any more detail in the rock until that completely dries. There is some choppy water here. And then as it gets into this, further into this bay, it smooths out. We want this dark right under there, or otherwise they look like they're up in the air, these little pieces of land. trees. And I think there would be some of a brighter green on the sky, the part that's facing the sun. I 
I've looked at this painting and the photo for a few days now, and I've come up with a few things that I'd like to change. One is that the rocks on the bottom left are just odd looking. And so I'd like to make them reflect the land by going higher on the left and staying in one piece and getting down to the size that the second rock in is. The second thing is that the land has kind of disappeared into the water. And even though it is that way in the photo, you can't see the land, I want you to be able to see the land from across a room. The third thing is it's that it turned into a stormy day instead of a sun peeking through the clouds day. And then last but not least is the Twinkie in the sky. And I will explain that to you later in the video. I'm going to start with these two pieces of rock and make it come down higher and maybe a bit jaggedier. When it's matted or framed, the frame will come up about a quarter of an inch, so this rock barely shows anyway. So I'm actually gonna make it jut out a little bit more. I don't really want these rounder places. It's, I want it to be more angular. I'm not finished with that, but I want to wait until it dries and I'm going to use some bleed proof white to brighten it up. And I'm using the bleed proof be sure to use a clean brush to get it out so you don't contaminate your jar. And then you mix it with whatever color you want. So I'm mixing it with a little bit of uh, gray blue. I'm gonna turn my painting here. And there's a few things that I want to emphasize along here and I'm just gonna make a streak along here. More than one streak. So this shoreline, it does go level like shorelines, like water in the distance does, but what you can't see is the jaggedy rocks. I'm using another brush to soften that edge, but it has a little tiny bit of paint in it so that I can not have these sharp edges of white or light blue. I'm back with a little bit with the wider brush because it's, it's drying very quickly. I want there to be some big rocks showing. And the light is coming from the, the land in the photo, so I should continue that, and make it, you know, these rocks stand out from that direction. Now let's quickly get our other brush and smooth these in a little bit so we don't just have polka dots on there. Now if you don't like the color and you want it to look more like this color, you can go back in um, and paint right over Bleed Proof White. You just can't agitate it a lot. You have to make one swipe. This is just to make the land not become the main subject, because I think the clouds are that, but to make it just show. I'm going to mix some yellows with my green. I've mixed a gamboge so that it's not bright. I'm going to paint right over these trees, this white part. That land shows a lot better now. Now I need to do the same treatment over on these rocks. very lightly to change the color. I promised you I'd show you that. I'm going to try and lift some of this. And I'm pushing it one direction. I might even push against my brush, which 
you can get out a cheaper brush if you want to for, for something like that. And then I'm touching my brush to the sponge to get some of the water out of it. And so it's getting lighter. That's opened up the white quite a bit at the top. And but I'm going to add a tiny bit of bleed proof white right here. Where I want this to go back but look a little bit cloud shaped, not brush stroke shaped. All of you who have taken a class from Stan Miller will know what a Twinkie is. He tells the story of a Thanksgiving dinner that was prepared by a gourmet cook and everybody went and loved the meal. But on the way out the door, the hostess handed them a Twinkie. Well, after that, all of them, all they could talk about was, what was it with that Twinkie? Why did they give us a Twinkie? And they forgot about the beautiful meal that they had been served. And the same thing happens when you have something in a painting that's totally out of place. And this is what I'm talking about. This looks just like an animal head instead of a cloud. It's crisper than all the other clouds, and it comes up with a neck. And so I am going to diminish that. And one thing is just to soften some edges around it and to let the blue sky come over here. All of it soft, soft stuff that I'm gonna do until I get rid of that look, because I don't really want people to be looking at the animal head instead of the painting. And one way is to get rid of the sharp lines that were there on top of there. Let the blue come down a little. Just blend in so that it's sort of blue. Now here's another sharp edge, I mean an original sharp edge that still needs to go away. Just make some wispies of blue come through it. Right here, it's still doing its thing there. I can still see it, but perhaps now somebody that hadn't seen the painting before wouldn't. But I'm going to try and get it that I can't even see it. So I'm mixing up some more blue-gray, and I'm just going to go a lot darker right into it. Work on getting rid of that edge that was there, and this edge. And of course I want to soften those. And then just to make sure, I'm going to bring some white across. And I do believe that did it. Although a kid still might find it, because you know how kids are. They're amazing. So I'm going to put some white back here, too. And down here. All right, now for the lighthouse. Let's see if my paper is dry enough. I'm just starting with it black. Like I said, I'm going to leave out a bunch of detail because it's just, you know, the impression of a lighthouse over there. And then the light is coming again from this side. And 
There's a shadow from those rocks on it. Maybe it actually needs to be dark against the sky over here because it's, it's losing the sharpness of the sun, the evening sun. Or morning sun, actually, I do believe I was there in the morning. Now I will come back in with pen and do that little bit some more. liked this video, would you hit the like button and give me a comment and tell me what you think and how it goes for you. The water here wasn't one of the first things I've noticed, but now I realize that that needs a little bit of work. And some of these rocks stand out too much from the distance. There's a little bit of the blue sky reflecting in here. That's, uh, that's the manganese color that comes across. And as it comes across, it gets smaller into this part. It disappears. But there are lines of it that go across this. And the lines get smaller as they go to the back, bigger in the front, until they come into this wavy looking stuff. In retrospect, since I'm doing so much direct painting on this, perhaps I should have done this whole thing in direct painting instead of the wet on wet. If you want to see a wet on wet where I didn't do direct painting, check out the video at the end. to diminish these rocks over here, sort of ochre color. I didn't actually use ochre. And I'm going to just do a wash over them. And I'm going to agitate enough that some of the white breaks up. I love taking the tape off. It's like magic. Let me know what you think. Happy painting.